All right, why don't you uh, pause for a couple of minutes here and give this question a shot. Okay, the label on a box of cereal gives the mass of cereal in two units. 978 grams and 34.5 ounces. Use this information to find a conversion factor between the English and metric units. How many significant figures can you justify in your conversion factor? So first of all, the English scale is the American scale. So that's the um, first point of confusion. Sometimes it's called the imperial scale, the imperial set of measurements. Um, and the English were the ones that created it. And um, in America, we just adopted that measurement set. And of course, the English in a lot of places abandoned that set too and adopted the metric system, but the Americans didn't. So when they say the English measurements or English units, they're talking about inches and uh, feet and miles and um, the units that we use in America. So to make a conversion factor, what we need to do is find a ratio between these two values. So we have 978 grams and 34.5 ounces. So uh, this would be one potential conversion factor. Um, but the uh, convention is generally to make one of these equal to one. And the way that we would do that would be to just divide the two numbers. Of course, 978 to 34.5 is a ratio. And if I put those numbers into a calculator, 978 divided by 34.5, then I get 28.3478261 is the number that comes out when I put 978 divided by 34.5. So grams and ounces are my units. And they are not the same. I have a unit in the numerator and a unit in the denominator, but they're not the same unit. So neither of them get canceled out. So I have to keep both grams over ounces. Those are both part of the unit now, grams per ounce. So the other thing I have to look at here would be that um, I'm, I have way too many numbers, right? When, you have, when you're solving a problem in this class, and your answer has this many digits. Generally, if it has more than five digits, then you should really take a look at it and see if you're justified in keeping that many numbers. And the way you determine how many numbers you're allowed to keep is by um, analyzing the significant figures here. So let's look at our two numbers from our question, 978 and 34.5. This has three significant figures, and this has three significant figures. So that means I'm allowed to keep three significant figures in my answer. And so um, I'll keep the first three, and I look at this, the, number, the first number after those three. So I'll keep the two 8.3, and the four is smaller than five, so that means I would round down. So then my answer would become 28.3 grams per ounce. Now, I could just as easily have flipped these numbers around because there's, um, depending on the situation, I uh, might need to know how many ounces there are per gram, for example. So I can just put 34.5 ounces divided by 978 grams thirty four point five divided by nine seven eight equals zero point zero three five two seven six oh seven 
ounces per gram, but I still am only allowed to have three significant figures. So I'll keep the first three non-zero numbers, right? These are insignificant, so these don't count. So I'll, I'll keep the three, five, and the two. Look at the seven, it tells me to round up. So then my final answer here, um, I've still, even though these numbers don't count for significant figures, they still do count as placeholders. So I can't just drop those zeros. I've got to include them in the answer, even though they're not significant. This becomes three, five, three, since I round that two up due to the seven. And my units in this case would be ounces per gram. And I just flip them, I just flip it over. So these are both conversion factors. These would both be considered um, conversion factors to convert between grams and ounces, or ounces and grams. A barrel of oil is exactly 42 gallons. How many liters of oil are in a barrel? So go ahead and pause it here and give this question a shot. All right, so um, as I said before, when you're required to know a conversion from the English system or the imperial system into the metric system, how many miles per kilometer or how many meters per yard or something, I will always supply this information to you. I don't expect you to memorize this information. All the information that's on this table here is information that I'll supply to you. So. Um, Another one that's on here is, or uh, that's not on here, I should say, is that four, oops, four quarts equals one gallon. So we're going to need that one too. All right, a barrel of oil is exactly 42 gallons. So whenever we're trying to make a conversion here, we need to figure out a few things. We need to figure out what unit we're given. So 42 gallons. The number we're given is 42, and the unit we're given is gallon. We should always write these first in the numerator. So now we need to figure out what we're trying to convert into. How many liters of oil are in a barrel? So I want to go to liters. So I start a gallon, and I want to go to liters. So if I look down here at my uh, table, I don't see a way to get from gallons to liters. But if we look at this piece of information I supplied, I can get from gallons to quarts. And then there's a conversion here that gets me from quarts to liters. So I can go from gallons to quarts to liters. So I need to change my map here a little bit. I can't get directly from gallons to liters. I'd go from gallons to quarts to liters. That'll be my map. So I'm going to move this down here so I don't run into my map. 42 gallons. And the first step, according to my map, is to go to quarts. So the way that I'm going to set this problem up is to draw a blank conversion factor here. And if I have gallons in numerators and I'm in the numerator and I'm trying to cancel that unit, then I need to put gallons in the denominator down here. And I know that I'm trying to, from my map, I know I'm trying to get from gallons to quarts. So if I've got gallons on the bottom, then I need to put quarts on the top. So if I set my math problem up like this, then the gallons are on the, in the numerator and in the denominator. So that's equal to 1, so that will cancel out. So we always have to make sure that when we are drawing in our conversion factors here, that we're putting the units that we want to cancel in the numerator and the denominator. So now I've gone from gallons to quarts, but I'm not done because the question's asking for liters. So I need another conversion factor here. 
And if I've got quarts in the numerator now, in my first conversion, and I want to cancel quarts out, then I need to put quarts in the denominator of my next conversion factor. And now according to my map, I go from gallons to quarts and quarts to liters. So my last unit up here should be liters. So now again, if I look at the way that I've set these units up, if I have quarts in the numerator and quarts in the denominator, then they're going to cancel out. And I'll be left with liters. Liter is the only unit that's in this problem that hasn't been canceled out. So that means that liter will be the unit that I'm left with. So let's put in some numbers according to our chart now. I think this is a really good way to approach these problems, to put in what you're given first over here, and then put in the units just like I did this time. I didn't even put in any numbers. I just put in the units to make sure that I, I set my conversions up correctly so that the appropriate units would cancel and I'd be left with the one that I wanted. So now that I've, I've got it set up right, now I can go back and fill these numbers in. And filling the numbers in is just looking at this chart down here and seeing which numbers go where. Well, this says there's four quarts equals one gallon. So I'll put the numbers like that, four quart over one gallon. Now I have to put in the numbers of my next one, liters and quarts. Well, I have two. I have one liter equals 1.0567 quarts or I have one quart equals 0 0.94635 liters. Those are the same, it doesn't matter which one I use. So I'll just do this one. One liter equals 1.0567 quarts. So as long as my units cancel, and I know that they do because that was the first thing I did was I set my units up right, then I know that the numbers are in the right place because I just pulled the numbers directly from this table down here. So the last step in this problem is to put these numbers into the calculator and actually solve it. So let me pull my calculator up here. Oh, let me erase this. Maps in the way there. Okay. So the way that we would do the math for this problem is I would put 42 times 4. See, 42 times 4 equals. And now I have to divide by what's on the bottom. I know it's a 1 this time, so if I divide by 1, I'm just going to get the same thing. But I want to just uh, go through this problem uh, step by step, because sometimes that number on the bottom is not going to be a 1. So I go 42 times 4 equals the answer divided by this number equals the answer 168 multiplied by this number times 1 equals that answer divided by this number divided by 1.0567 equals whoa and a lot of sig figs here. Or excuse me, a lot of numbers, not necessarily significant though. All right, so I'm going to move my calculator over here. There we go. OK, so I know that not all of these numbers are going to be significant. So I'm just going to write a few of these here. 1.8, 158.988. Five. That's plenty of numbers. So in fact, if I look at my question, this is how I would determine how many sig figs I can keep because it's the only measurement I have in my original question. So there's two sig figs in that number, so I get to keep two sig figs in my answer. So I keep the first two, and I look at this number, which is an 8, which tells me to round up. So if I round up, this anymore then this is going to equal oops equals 
one six zero. Oh, I forgot the units up here. Liters. Liters. So my one five eight point nine eight five something 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 liters is going to round up to one hundred and sixty liters. All right, go ahead and pause the video again for a couple of minutes and take a shot at this one. All right, complete the following conversions. 612 grams equals how many milligrams? So again, whenever we're doing a conversion, we're going to want to start by finding the number and the unit that we're given, 612 grams. And that's going to go in the numerator. And then directly after that, we're going to write a blank conversion factor. And this is always the way that you should start these problems. And you don't have to remember very much to get yourself this far. And once you've gotten this far, the next step is to remember that the point of dimensional analysis is to cancel out a unit that is in the numerator and in the denominator. So if I have grams here in the numerator already, and I want to cancel it, then I need to put another unit of grams down here in the denominator so that they'll cancel. And now I'm going from grams to milligrams, so the next step is to put a value of milligram up here in the numerator. So now um, I have set this unit conversion up correctly so that my um, like units will cancel, grams and grams, will cancel. I've got one in the numerator and one in the denominator. Nothing can cancel milligrams, so my milligram now is uh, um, will be the unit that whatever after I'm done with the math here, my units will be milligrams because there's nothing to cancel that unit of milligram. So um, let's see. Um, the next step is to fill in these values in our conversion factor here. And so I have a table from the textbook that shows us the value of these um, unit prefixes. So here, this unit prefix, maybe I've made it a little bit too big here. Um, remember that the uh, a capital M stands for mega, and the lowercase m stands for milli. So in this case, oops, this is blue. Milligram, so we'll make sure that that looks smaller. So um, we are using the prefix milli, so we should find that down here in our table. And it sh we see here that milli, lowercase m, is equal to a factor of 10 to the minus 3. So what that means is that this little m is equal to this number 10 to the minus 3. So if I have mg, that's the same as 10 to the minus 3g. Because m equals 10 to the minus 3. So mg equals 10 to the minus 3g. M equals 10 to the minus 3. That's how we should interpret this chart. That whenever we see the prefix, I always have one of these. One milligram equals whatever this, pre, whatever this uh, multiplication factor is from the table. So one milligram equals 10 to the minus 3 grams. So that's how I'm going to read my uh, chart, my metric uh, prefix chart down here. So let's move this out of the way and solve the math here. Okay, so let me bring the calculator up now. So here's how we're going to solve this one. 612 times whatever's on top, 
times 1 equals divided by whatever is on the bottom. So divided by 10, oops, I didn't do that one right. I'm not used to using this computer calculator. Give me a minute here. 612 times whatever is on top divided by whatever is on the bottom. So that's going to be, I'm going to write negative 3, and then there we go. So 612 divided by 10 to the negative third equals 612,000. So um, grams is canceled, so my units are now milligrams. And I should the last thing I should do in these problems is check my significant figures to make sure that I haven't um, added or lost any precision. So from my question here, I have three significant figures, 6, 1, 2. So that means I'm allowed to have three significant figures in my answer. And that's how many I have, 6, 1, 2. So, this would be the final answer. All right, let's do the next one. Here's the number that I'm given. Then I'll draw my blank conversion factor. And whatever unit I have in the top, I should put down here in the bottom. So we can always get this far without remembering much more. So in fact, we can do that down here for all the rest of these. So I always take the number that I start with. Micrograms. Draw a blank conversion factor. Then put that unit on the bottom. Micrograms. 780 one milliliters blank conversion factor and put that unit on the bottom milliliters 4.18 kilograms draw my conversion factor and put that unit on the bottom kilograms so that's always the way you should start these problems and now i have to determine what i'm going to in this case in B, I'm going to centimeters, so I'll put centimeters on top. Here, I'm going to grams, grams on top, liters on top, grams on top. That way, I can make sure that I'm always setting it up correctly so that once I put the numbers in, I'm going to have multiplied their or divided them correctly. So here, M on top, M on bottom, cancels out. Micrograms on top, micrograms on bottom. Milliliters on top, milliliters on bottom. Kilograms on top, kilograms on bottom. So now I've got to fill in the numbers from my table. So let me bring my table back over. All right, now I've got uh, C, centimeter. Here's C, 10 to the minus 2. So remember that c equals 10 to the minus 2. So I'm going to have 1 centimeter is 10 to the minus 2 meters. All right, what about this one? Grams and micrograms. Here's micro. 10 to the minus 6 is the prefix associated with that. So remember that the 1 is always going to go with the number that already has a prefix. So 1 Microgram, this time it's on the bottom, is 10 to the minus 6 grams. 1 microgram, micro equals 10 to the minus 6, so 10 to the minus 6 grams. Those are equal. All right, let's do it down here on the next one. Milli. Here's milli, 10 to the minus 3. So the number, uh, the factor always goes with the base unit. So M1 ML equals 10 to the minus 3L. 
All right, and now the, the one on the bottom, kilo. Kilo equals 10 to the positive 3. So we're going to do the same thing here. 1 kilogram. 1 always goes with the, no, the unit that has a prefix. And the multiplication factor always goes with the unit that doesn't have a prefix. 10 to the third grams. All right, let's move this table out of the way here. And let's do some calculation. All right, I'm going to move it over here now. All right, 8.160 times the number on top, times 1, equals divided by the number on the bottom. This is how I enter it on this calculator, 10 to the minus 2, and then I push this button, 10 to the x. And that shows that, that I want to do 10. This caret means exponent, 10 exponent negative 2, which gives me this value. And I push yes, that's what I want to do. This equals 8, uh-oh. This equals 816, and my units in this case are centimeters, because my meters cancel out. All right, let's try the next one. 3779 times negative 6, and then I push this button, 10 to the negative 6, equals... 3779 times 10 to the negative 6 equals, divided by the number on the bottom, divided by 1 equals 0 0.003779 grams. Okay, let's do the next one. 7, 8, 1 times 10 to the negative third equals divided by 1 equals. So like I said earlier, you obviously don't have to multiply by 1 or divide by 1. You're just going to get the same number. The reason I keep doing that over and over again here is um, just to get you familiar with the process of always multiplying by the number that's on the top of your conversion factor, and you always divide by the number that's on the bottom of your conversion factor. And not only that, because um, sometimes these numbers won't be one. You'll have a number on top and a different number on bottom, and you'll have to multiply and then divide by those numbers. So it makes sense to get into the habit of doing that now. Um, and it's also important to uh, make sure that you're putting these uh, equations into your calculator correctly. Um, so the way that I make sure that I'm not forgetting the order of operations is to just um, bypass the order of operations and do one function at a time. So I'll multiply then push equals and then I'll divide and then I'll push equals and then I'll multiply and push equals and divide and push equals and so on. Sometimes students will string all of the equations that they'll try to multiply and divide everything before they push equals once, and they'll just put all of the operations into the calculator at the same time. And sometimes your calculator will do those operations in a different order than you're intending, um, because you didn't put in parentheses maybe, and it's, uh, it's following the order of operations in a way that you didn't foresee. So um, it's important to be able to write these out in the way that we are here, but it's also important to be able to put these numbers into your calculator and get the right answer. So make sure you're getting some practice doing both of those. All right, let's try this last one here. 4.18 times 10 to the third 
equals divided by one equals four thousand one hundred eighty and my units are grams.